Okay, another quick one. Um, we're gonna typically lazy day today, first week in January. I don't care. Uh, okay, so what have we done today? Um, mostly it's been thinking. <laughs> I haven't actually sat at the computer much. Um, I have been reading uh, a book um, on pie testing. Uh, but which is interesting. It's a, it's a good book. Um, hang on a second. Uh, uh, what's it called? Oops. Uh, it's called Python Testing with PyTest, second edition. Uh, and it's by... Uh, oh, that's clear. It's by Brian... Oh, come here. Nothing is ever simple, is it? Brian Oaken, O K K E N. There you go. The long and the short of it is um, it's a good book. It, it takes you through sort of step by step uh, what um, uh, um, yeah how to how to use uh, PyTest now set it up how to use fixtures and write uh, write fixtures and hooks and all that various stuff. So um, it's stuff that. I kind of knew already. Uh, I mean, I've used PyTest a few times, um, but I'm going to be using it much more extensively over the coming months. So I thought pressure would be a good idea. And this book had been recommended on the, I think it was on the DevOps um, subreddit. Come on then, if you're going to come up. Yeah, I know you want to be let out, but you'll have to wait. Are you coming up? No? Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, um, so that's been occupying my time today. But are you being a pain? Um, yeah, I know, I know what you want, but you, uh, you'll have to wait. You can go out in a minute. Come on. Come on. If you're coming up, come on. There you go. Uh, yeah. Pytest. Um, so yes, so that's been that's been the main thing today. Um, although, frankly, that's been sort of the background task. But I've just been watching crappy YouTube videos. But I've also been thinking. <laughs> I do a lot of this when I'm out walking in. Um, and I've been thinking about uh, uh, one of the things I want to try and do is write a book on using salt uh, as part of this whole um, developing environment thing. Um, and as I was saying yesterday, one of the first things I'm going to do is write uh, a, a deployment script for uh, Gitia. Now, Gitia is a fairly simple beast, but uh, it's good as an example of the kind of thinking, the thought process you have to go through uh, when you're designing um, a deployment. Uh, so I'll, I'll just use this to explain. There we go. Okay. Um, and I thought I'd have a camera, but that's fine. Okay. So um, Gitia basically consists of three parts. Okay. There's Gitia itself. very laggy um let's get to itself uh which is effectively a um a go application um, with a, a built-in web server on it okay so you know your your users connect to that uh, by um whatever means uh now gitia depends on whoa, whoa. 
Which, hmm, which pen has got something wrong with the pen now? I probably need it again. Uh, so Gitty has got uh, a dependency on Git, uh, which, um, so, so yeah, so Git has got a dependency on Git, so you need to install Git on, on ostensibly the same machine as the Gitia application. Okay, but Gitia also uses um, a database. So let's see, Postgres. Right. Now that Postgres database could be on the same host. So in actual fact, all of this stuff. That. Okay, and in most home labs uh, and sort of uh, small applications, that's exactly what you would do. You would you would just stick it all on the same machine. Okay, which makes the deployment, whether you're using Ansible, Puppet, Salt, whatever, really simple. Okay, you could write the whole thing as one deployment state. But in a more realistic environment. You're not going to have this. You're, okay, you're, you're going to have this situation where really just like this, okay, where the Postgres will be on a on a, a completely separate uh, server somewhere. Uh, yeah, and and Gitty will just connect to it. That doesn't, however, um, stop the fact that you still need that Postgres to be installed. Right now, using Salt as the example, okay, um, in Salt, uh, each minion represents one of these hosts. Okay, so you'd have a minion in charge. Whoops, a minion. Okay, controlling this machine, and the Postgres would be on another machine, and you'd have a minion on there. So you, you could have a minion on here which said, okay, deploy the Gitia, um, uh, deploy the Gitia program, uh, deploy Git. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Uh, and on this machine, you've got deploy Postgres. Um, all simple so far. <clears throat> but you need some what they call orchestration Okay, so there's some orchestration for the system as a whole. Okay, so for this, you need orchestration, which basically says, in essence, first deploy Postgres. Okay, then deploy Gitia and Git. Okay, not necessarily in that order. Okay, you want Git and then Gitia, and then you can start Gitia up and your users can access it. Okay, so this orchestration is what uh, is the important part. And in actual fact, uh, you know, you might want to use orchestration even if it's on the same machine. Okay, so you might want orchestration that basically says, okay, install Git and Gitia and Postgres. Uh, the thing that was, uh, or the thing that, people get confused with I think is things like um, okay Gitia has a very fundamental relationship with Git okay so what they what the temptation is to write a state which basically says deploy Gitia um, sorry deploy Git then deploy Gitia uh, and you you provide that as a as a, uh, a formula Uh, you deploy that as a as a, a formula in its own right uh, and call that the Gitia deployment. The problem is if you do that and you make the deployment of Git a part of the Gitia deployment, um, you know, as purely as the Gitia step, uh, any environment that uh, wants to deploy Git some other way, i.e., not as a default package or something like that they want to build it from source and have their own deployment method um 
your your formula for get here would no longer work okay? because your formula for get here is all wrapped up and explicitly says deploy git so you need to have these short sort of meta level where you say okay a gitia deployment consists of deploying the database deploying git and then deploying gitia itself okay and each of those is three separate sort of states that need to be applied in a particular sequence in order for the deployment to be considered right, done and that's where orchestration comes in now you could do that, like I said, with one orchestration in three states. Okay, one state to deploy it, one state to deploy it here, one state to deploy the database, uh, and then have orchestration which says, okay, do this, then this, this. Or you could do it as two states, one which says deploy the database server, and the next one which says deploy the Gitia server. Now, the thing with the Gitia server state is that's actually a sort of meta state which says first call the Gitia state, sorry, first call the Git state, then call the Gitia state. Uh, so you kind of like set this, this meta level of state. Um, and I think that's the way to go with it because uh, intrinsically the Gitia uh, application really wants to be on the same machine as the Git uh, installation. So those two belong on the same host, okay? whereas the database could be on the same host, could be on a different host. So you leave that to an orchestration layer. And it's those kind of, yeah, those kind of considerations, because we could, we, we could, for example, ignore the orchestration layer and just have a meta state that says deploy the Postgres, deploy Git, deploy Gitia. And that's your kind of like top level state, which you might call something like deploy git here in its entirety <laughs> and have three substates okay two of which would be formula and one of which would be a state deploy git when all of that waffle makes a lot more sense if you understand it's all work but we'll get there hopefully in the next day or two i'll i'll, I'll sum it up some um wherewithal and uh, I will make uh, make this state up in fact I might make it up in the different ways and just show you what I mean yeah uh, that might be a that might be something anyway so anyway yeah these are the sorts of stupid scenarios that keep me awake at night thinking about how best to explain this uh, now that jumbled mess is not, by the way, the best way to explain it. I'm hoping that once I've got it clear in my head of what I want to explain, I'll be able to write it down in a way that I can understand clearly. Um, but the point is that these things, it, infrastructure, I think, uh, I, I think the problem is that a lot of infrastructure, first of all, a lot of infrastructure is less left till the last minute. In other words, see, people see it as the, the last thing to do, um, whereas I see it as the first thing to do. I think you, your infrastructure should be the first thing you start thinking about. As soon as you start thinking, okay, we're going to write this application, and the architects are saying, well, okay, we're going to write this application in the following way. It doesn't matter if you're going to write it as microservices, you're going to write it as you know, three-tier system, a four-tier system, whatever. Um, however, you're going to architect the system. As soon as they've got the basic framework in place about what the, what the architecture is going to be, start designing your infrastructure and writing the deployment for your infrastructure, uh, even though you might have nothing to actually deploy into that infrastructure. doesn't matter. You, know, you should start writing it and testing it from day one. And as soon as you start getting deliveries of applications or services or whatever, you start plugging them into your infrastructure as you get them. So that you've got this constant deployment of the infrastructure uh, and all the time that you're looking at the infrastructure and don't rely on architects necessarily to, to to think about this because it's a bit like the architects of a building they have a tendency to think about elegant solutions without thinking about the practicalities of it okay 
Uh, you need to put your ops part of your DevOps hat on and be thinking, well, okay, uh, given that we've got this infrastructure, how am I going to maintain this infrastructure? Well, how am I going to monitor this infrastructure? Yeah. How am I going to maintain this infrastructure? Okay, by which I mean, uh, when I do a new deployment, what's the effect? How does that work? Okay, uh, and with traditional uh, infrastructure or tr traditional architectures, you've got things like you know your your front end, your application layer, and your database. That's kind of like the three layer model. Uh, a lot of the time, architects don't think about this, but if I want to migrate my database or update my database, how am I going to do that? Uh, you know, um, when I come to update my application layer, how do I do that? Okay, uh, if I've got a twenty four seven requirement, I can't just take the thing offline. Yeah. So you end up with like, okay, we need a multi leg system. So we've got two machines in the application layer, maybe two machines in the database layer so that I can shut one leg down, put all the load onto the other leg during a, an off period, you know, when I know that usage is going to be low, update this leg, get it all tested, lead all the traffic across into the new updated leg, then update this leg, test it, put both legs back into the load balancer or whatever. But a lot of the time, these things are not thought about. Even when you're dealing with things like Microsoft, okay? Microservices, microservices done properly should not be a problem because you should be able to just drop in a new microservice and then gradually bleed uh, the old microservices out of the system uh, and nothing will be any the wiser, okay? Because those, those services should, to all intents and purposes, work irrespective of versions and so on. Um, but most microservices infrastructure uh, i gather um and certainly the ones that i've seen that are, are not made that way <laughs> uh you know and there is a huge dependency between these things okay whenever you see somebody say say something like you know oh we, we, you know we need to test the whole system with this new service you, you've now got a problem because that means that you've got dependencies um, and, and coupling between services which you shouldn't have microservices by definition you should be able to just take one microservice out and put the other one in and the rest of the system shouldn't give a damn okay um well on version of them uh, that doesn't take away from the fact by the way that you're still going to have at some point you're going to have state you're going to have databases things like that to do um, and you've still got this problem of well okay how do i go about updating it? how do i update the version of the database engine how do i update the database itself how do i migrate databases when i need to um what are the practical realities of doing that uh, do i need am i going to need to take the system offline yeah. um <laughs> the answer if the answer is well we can't take the system offline then you need to design your system specifically to deal with the fact that i'm going to take it off and this is, you know, uh, this is all stuff that should be going through your head uh, whenever you're looking at how do I deploy this system? Yeah? Um, what command am I going to issue uh, in order to do these operations? Uh, and if the answer comes down to, well, it, it's a complex process, uh, I'm going to need to write a document, chances are your design your, your design's not right. Okay, you shouldn't need... At the end of the day, you shouldn't need a complex process to do these updates. You should be able to do it as part of your CI CD chain. It shouldn't be something which is complex and difficult. But that requires work up front. You need to stop. You need to sit down. You need to think about these things and design your infrastructure to accommodate this stuff. And this, this is no different to, uh, and, and this is why I think. This is no different to designing an application bill. Okay, we give these kind of considerations in applications. So, you know, why don't we give this consideration to the infrastructure as a whole? And I think it, it it's a historical thing. It's because we development tended to develop stuff and then throw it over the fence to ops, and after that it was their problem. Um, and I think that that history means that 
this attitude of i'll oh, just get it working and then it's not our problem anymore um, whereas devops by its very nature says that this continues to be our problem therefore you need to switch the whole development team from application thinking to system thinking okay you've got to think about okay the system as a whole everything from the metal up even if you're in the cloud if you're in the cloud okay the metal and the virtualization that sits on top of that as part of the cloud infrastructure okay yes you are no longer responsible for the day-to-day condition -day but the fact of the matter is that shit is still going to happen in that layer okay and you need to think about the impact it's going to have yeah, um, yeah people blindly go along with these things and then, and then you sort of go well hang on a minute okay uh we're on aws what if amazon decide that a particular service is going to be deprecated that you use or they're going to change the api or uh, uh the cost is going to go up and you you no longer want to pay for using that service you want to use something else if you haven't sufficiently decoupled your infrastructure from that layer uh you're going to have a bad day uh, and potentially bad weeks bad months okay? it's going to be a lot of work it's going to be difficult what happens when things things do go tits up yeah um and that is system thinking okay you're thinking about the system don't just ignore it and don't do things like oh you know well we're, we're kubernetes it's not an issue blah 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 bullshit okay Kubernetes gets updated, things change, yeah. Uh, and and when they change, you know, again, cost models change, the way things work change. It it will change constantly. Yeah. The old joke, the only constant is change, is absolutely fucking true. And unless you have systems thinking, um, you're gonna get yourself into a lot of trouble. Anyway, mm. okay, that ended up being a bit of a rant. Uh, they're very cathartic i don't know how constructive they are but they're very cathartic um okay i'm going to get these on a more even keel uh, as we go forward to be perfectly honest these first few are partly just for me to get used to doing this every day i, I want to try and do it daily uh mainly to drive me to do things so i've got stuff to think talk about um and because i've not actually done stuff these tend to be a bit ranty at the moment that will change um as, as i as i start to put stuff together that will change uh right okay right i've wasted enough of your time i'm gonna go and do something else now